Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and I've just developed a modular paving system for 112th or dollhouse scale miniature gardens, and I can't wait to share it with you. This modular system uses a series of stencils in order to achieve really cool results. Now, it was developed for the Cricut Maker, but as long as you have an electronic cutting system that can use SVG files, you'll be able to help yourself to the free files and follow along. So, let's get started. The first file that you can download includes two strips of pavement and some edging strips. The length of each strip of pavement is between 10 and 11 inches long and slightly under 3 inches wide. The second file contains this intersection piece and it's made to work together with the pavement section pieces from the first file so that you can place intersections wherever you would like and have a repeating pathway pattern leading off from both directions. And finally, I've included this basket weave pattern to help change things up. Here are the dimensions for this pathway. You can combine all of these patterns in any way that you would like. The basket weave sections fit together by keying the stencil over a previously created pattern and just extending it in whatever direction suits your fancy. To get started using this modular paving system today, click on the associated link to the blog post. There you'll find all the Cricut Maker settings and you can download your free SVG files. I'll be creating a dollhouse scale diorama based on this piece of foamular, which is 10 inches deep and 17 and 3 quarters of an inch wide. I've selected these dimensions so that the piece will fit comfortably inside a standard Billy bookcase from IKEA. I'll be using the paving stencils to help me design the layout of this diorama. So first I'll place the intersection and hopefully be able to build my vision of the scene around this piece. I don't want to have it completely centered. That would strike me as being a little too boring. So I'm moving it a little bit to the left and I want one of the pathways to end at our classical miniature fountain. At the other end of the diorama, I want to create a little seating area, and this will be completely paved. Not quite sure about the placement for this miniature birdbath, but I'm thinking this corner here. Now the armillary sphere is going to go in the center of the intersecting paths. And I want the door to be inset into a small niche set back from the outer edge of the diorama where it will open outward. There'll be a series of garden walls that enclose the space with this niche inset. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the design and I think I'm going to go ahead and mark out the location for the doorway. I'm just using a mechanical pencil here. It doesn't make really good marks, but it does incise the surface of the foam, so it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, now I know where the doorway is going to go. That's a crucial piece of information. And I want to create this niche so that the corner that results in the interior of the garden will be large enough to hold that birdbath without feeling too crowded. And I also want to create enough of a margin on either side of the door to create a pretty robust 
dorse around. So that looks like about the right dimension to me. Now that that's been established, I'm going to go ahead and mark everything out with a Sharpie. These vertical lines indicate where the garden walls will protrude forward to the outer edge of the diorama. And I've decided to use the basket weave pattern for the paving that will lie in front of the secret garden door. Okay, so now that I have a rough idea of the placement of most of the pieces here, I'll go ahead and mark those placements onto the top of the Fomular board. Just outlining them again with a Sharpie. Once I've marked out the placement of each of the individual pieces, I'll actually use the stencil in order to define the outlines of the pathways. And I'll be layering two of these pathway stencils at the end to create that pavement area. Okay, now that we have the basics in place, it's time to put down a base coat on top of the Fomular and we can go from there. The base coat I'm creating today is made from cheap acrylic craft paint, brown mixed with a little bit of black and quite a bit of water. This creates a wash that is almost opaque, but not quite. After the first coat, you'll still be able to see some of the Sharpie markings on the surface of the foam. I'm gonna let that first coat dry and then come back and apply a second layer. This layer obscures most of the marks, but they did leave indentations in the surface, so I'll still be able to use them as reference points. Now, to begin creating the pathways, I'm using joint compound mixed with cheap red acrylic craft paint. I'd say that's about three tablespoons of joint compound and I'm mixing in the remaining brown wash to bring down the brightness of that red paint. And finally, I'm sprinkling in several tablespoons of fine sand. Now, fine sand is a little harder to get than regular playground sand, but to me, it's worth the effort because regular play sand from Home Depot is just a little bit too chunky to be in scale. I mix in three tablespoons of the fine sand a little at a time. And then I begin masking off the area that lies in front of the garden door. This way I'll be able to use the stencil without worrying about encroaching on the areas adjacent to this particular little piece of paving. The compound that we've made is really gritty and quite thick, and it leaves a deliciously dimensional effect on the surface of the Fomular. Now I'm just going to remove all that masking and Enjoy the fruits of, well, you can't really call it labor because that was super easy. Okay, next I'm attacking the paved area at the end of the diorama where the garden table and benches will be sitting. I use one of the pathway stencils and then wash it right away after wiping off the majority of the gunk and allow the surface to dry for just a few minutes. As soon as it's developed a bit of a skin, I can now key the next stencil onto the last row of pavers. And this makes it possible to extend this running bond brickwork pattern as far in either direction as you would like to go. 
it totally can be used for building walls if you so desire. Now I'm going to use the intersection stencil and I'm masking off the little piece of basket weave paving that will lie in front of the door. That way I won't intermingle these patterns. It's a good idea to mix up as much of the brickwork compound as you think you'll need for the entire piece at one time. That way your colors will stay consistent. You may have noticed that some of the gunk seeped underneath the stencil and that's because I wasn't paying close enough attention and I wasn't holding the stencil with enough pressure against the surface of the formular. But because this is the secret garden and it has been neglected for goodness knows how long, I don't mind a bit. These pathways are going to be crumbled and decrepit and covered with moss by the time we're finished with them. I'm just masking off the edge of the patio area in order to have those half bricks butt up cleanly against the existing pattern. And then I'm just using a little silicone tool to help remove some of the squish out. It doesn't take long for this to dry at all. And then I get to play with the placement. I'm really excited about how this is going to turn out. To smooth out the surface, you can just use a sanding sponge. It's really, really tough. You don't have to worry about it crumbling off. I just brush away the rubble with an old paintbrush. I've made an even thinner brown wash with acrylic craft paint and I'm using this to add some variation to the tones of the individual bricks and add a bit of grime at the edges of the pavement areas. This very light weathering pass makes a huge difference. I just love the way it creates an aged finish almost instantly. In future videos, we'll spend a lot more time creating aging and weathering effects on these pavers, but for now, I'm going to just let them dry. Initially, I really liked the idea of adding larger stone pavers at the edges of the walkways, but the real estate on this diorama is just a little too tight, so I won't be using them. Once the surface of the pavement has dried, and that doesn't take very long, it's time to put everything in place once again and just play with what the final vision will look like. And yep, I'm thrilled. It's going to be awesome. The surface is incredibly tough and it binds beautifully to the underlayment. I hope that you're as excited about using this modular pavement system for dollhouse miniature gardens and walls as I am to have created it. I love the way it looks even at this early stage, but I know that over time, as we add more and more components, it's going to create a richer and richer look. I look forward to sharing the next installment of the Secret Garden series of miniatures with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.